Well, Razorback fans, it is a what if Wednesday here on the show. And it's a very simple question. What if Calipari wins a national championship? You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. And hopefully everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as we are getting to the point of the middle of May. It's amazing how fast this year has gone. Like it's, it's nearly half over. And so uh, it's been wild to see all the stuff that's been going down. But overall, I think it's been pretty great. And we have a lot to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. Arkansas, Cal Perry, what if, what if he wins a national championship? Now, you can't sit there and say as a Razorback fan that it hasn't crossed your mind. I know we did a what if Wednesday a few weeks ago or even a month or so ago about what if it doesn't work out with Cal Perry. Like, what if, what if he doesn't get it done? What if he doesn't meet that expectation? And, you know, it's it's a reality that might be at least potentially in the mix. But I wanted to put a positive spin on it. I wanted to look at it from, if you're Arkansas and you're an Arkansas fan, what does it mean if he wins a championship? There's going to be Kentucky fans in the in the replies and in the mentions and everything just ripping everything that I'm about to say, but let's just look at the reality. Say in year one, Cal Perry just puts it together, just figures it out. He ends up not only having a great year in the regular season, but in the SEC tournament, and of course in the NCAA tournament. And the fun aspect of it is talking about what if he won the national championship. It's almost hard to fathom. It's almost hard to even wrap your head around it. Like how in the world could that even be a possibility? It seems just so far away. It doesn't seem real. But it's real. It's potentially there. It could happen. And we know that as a Razorback fandom, you have not won a national championship, at least in a major sport, since 1994. Basketball. You've yet to win a College World Series. Hopefully that changes this year. You haven't won a women's basketball national championship. And I guess in football you won in 1964. Although there was a lot of people that claimed championships back then, you at least have a legitimate claim to it. But other than that, that's it. A bunch of track national championships. Not downplaying those at all, but they just don't hit the same way as national championships do in the big three or even the big four sports in college. Now, we all can agree that winning a national championship in college football is the biggest deal. There's no bigger impact, no bigger intrigue, no bigger deal, show, whatever you want to call it, than winning a national championship in football. But because of Arkansas feeling like they're so far away from that, it's not worth entertaining. So what's the next up? Basketball. And Arkansas has legitimate reasons and legitimate chances to win a national championship in basketball. They did it in 94. And with what Cal Perry's putting together right now, they can do it again. Now, it's not going to be easy. So don't misconstrued. When I say potentially Arkansas has the ability to do it, that's exactly what I'm referring to, the potential. They still have a lot of bridges to get over. They still have a lot of obstacles to climb. But if they were to win it all in year one under Cal Perry, it would change the entire landscape of college athletics for the University of Arkansas. It would be, first off, 100% worth the amount of money that's being put into NIL, that was put into Cal Perry and all the efforts that it was made for Arkansas to bring him here to Fayetteville. Suddenly it's all justified and then some. Also, it rejuvenates 
and kind of downplays at the same time the idea that John Calipari is over the hill. He can't win a championship. You know, hey, good luck losing in the first round of the tournament. You know, all of this stuff. It completely changes that aspect where it's like, ah, whatever, stop. Don't worry about that because he's won a national championship. He still had it in him. He could still do it. But just think about the media coverage that you'd get. You're already getting a lot of great players. You're already getting a lot of great attention. But just think about how much you'd be at a next level. Everything would be better. It wouldn't matter what happened in football or what happened in baseball, what happened in any other sport. Winning a national championship would give everybody a sense of pride like they haven't had in quite some time. A way to talk trash to everybody. To make to laugh at all these other SEC schools and think that they're a blue-blooded program. They think that they got it going on. I think that they're better than you. For you to go and take Cal Perry and year one win a national championship. I, I mean, it's it's so poetic. It's so perfect. Even if you didn't win a national championship and at least made it to the final four, you feel justified. Nobody can take that from you. And the program that you always felt like you needed to be and should have been really comes to fruition. You start showing that, hey, we are a national championship contender because we won a national championship, and you can do that at Arkansas. You have all the pieces. You have all the things that you possibly need to win a national championship. You got it. You got it. So just looking at it in that alone perspective, how great that would feel, to feel vindicated, to feel excited for a change, to feel good for a change, to feel like you have the whole world in front of you for a change, like just to feel the way you felt like you deserved to feel. And then where do you go from there? It's hard to win a national championship. Everyone knows that. It's hard to, you know, really justify some of the takes that some people have when it comes to, oh, they should win a championship if it's championship or bust. Because, again, it's a really difficult thing to do, and I don't think people really quite understand just the difficulty of it. But it would show not only in basketball can you win a championship, but just at Arkansas you can win a championship. That, that's important to me. It may not be important to you, but it's important to me. Everyone just thinks that at particular schools, in particular sports, in particular programs, you know, they, they just have it so much easier. You felt like that as a Razorback fan. Now, you've, had, you've, you've looked at, say, a school like Alabama. You're like, why? Why are they good at basketball? They don't care about basketball. You know, you look at a place like LSU and in baseball, it's like, why do they win so many titles? It's like, you you feel like you have just as good amount of players, and it's like, but why do they keep winning titles? Why does it work so? E- why does it seem so easy for them? Why does it work so easily for them? I mean, you look at like like UConn in basketball, the back to back national champions. You're like, man, wh- why do they make it look so easy? Like it, it just changes the whole perspective of a place like Arkansas. They're like, wait, you can win in Fayetteville, you can win a national championship in Fayetteville, you can win. You can win something that everybody covets and everybody will be watching and paying attention to. And you get the attention of future players, future prospects, recruits, transfers, all of them. It just seems like it's almost too good to be true and how it all would come together. Thinking about being in San Antonio. I think that's where the Final Four is at. Winning a national championship in San Antonio. I don't really care where it's at if you win it. Say if you beat some good team. Say if you beat like a UConn. Just the joy, the excitement, the buildup. It was worth it all in the end. I'm not going to predict that Arkansas is going to win a national championship, but if I was going to say it, it's going to look like this simply. You're going to have... 
plenty of players that are highly talented and highly coveted on the team. You're going to have a coaching staff that's dedicated. You're going to have NBA prospects. And honestly, when I'm looking at Razorback basketball right now, I look at guys like a John L. Davis. I look at a Boogie Fland. I look at a Jonas Adu. You know, like just a mixture of all these high talent level guys. Different backgrounds, different ages, different groups, coming from different places. But I believe they have the talent to make it work. They have the talent to make it work. But they still may be needing another piece or two. And we'll talk about some of the updates on those pieces or two here in just a second. But folks, I got to tell you, passion, drive, and patience The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, uh, give you a little bit of an update on some players that Arkansas was really looking after. And Kayshawn Pryor being one of them. He was the uh, South Florida transfer 6'10 guy. He averaged, I believe it was like 13 points and like eight rebounds. A highly coveted player, but I start feeling really good about the chances of Arkansas getting him, but it seems like as, as more time went on, <laughs> it was like, I don't know, he, he really brought a lot of attention to his recruitment. You know, kept tweeting about it, kept you know hyping it up and everything. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily because I get it in the business. is like you're trying to hype yourself up. You're trying to hype up the attention that you'll get and everything. But I just had this feeling. I was like, okay, well, mate, I don't know if this is Cal's style for that. And lo and behold, apparently it wasn't because he ended up officially committing to Louisville. Now, just because he was a player that Arkansas wanted and that Cal Perry wanted and that I wanted, and I'm sure you wanted, does not mean that it's terrible, everything's bad. You know, like, oh, man, now that they missed out, what are they going to do? They still have other pieces of the puzzle to add in. They still have players to get added to the roster. Because right now they're sitting at seven. They're about halfway there. And my understanding is is that it's going to be an eighth and possibly a ninth player that are going to be of note. And when I say of note, I'm talking about players that are transferring in from major places or can be true contributors. Because the other guys are pretty much going to be walk-ons, scout players, you know, whatever it could be. That's all they're going to be. And so I still believe that DJ Wagner is going to end up being a Razorback. And again, depending on what time you listen to this podcast, maybe it's already happened, but I think you're going to see him commit to Arkansas. I feel good about that. And if you add him, that's eight players. That's pretty much your entire rotation in the beginning. But will it be enough? Will those players be enough, that group of players be enough to make you feel good about making a run in the Final Four? And, you know, here's the thing. I, talent-wise, I believe Arkansas will have the pieces they need. But it's about fitting it together. It's about making it work together. And it's a lot easier said than done. It's a lot easier to just have talent roll out the ball out and, hey, just go get it. 
You got to manage them. And we saw that problem with this past season with Arkansas that I, I still believe there was enough talent there to do something, but they just, it just went sour quick, very quickly. And that's a bummer because we know what type of talent that this team had. And I'm not saying that they for sure would have gone to a final four, but they would have, they should have been a team that at least went to the NCAA tournament. So with Cal Perry, he's, he knows what final four teams look like. He knows what championship teams look like. He's had them many times. And so that will be the ultimate question for me on this roster is how does he manage them? Is there going to be a lot of egos? Is there going to be a lot of guys saying, hey, you promised me this. You promised I'd play. Is there going to be guys that get frustrated in the middle of the year because they don't feel like they're getting enough pull or enough play or enough whatever? I mean, how problematic is it going to be? Well, how does he handle it? You know, these are the questions that I know he's done before and he's been asked and he's handled before, but they're legit concerns for me. Again, I like the talent that's been assembled so far. And I think you're going to have... Uh, more guys into the mix, but is it going to be enough to make people believe that this is a championship contender? We'll see. But I think if they add DJ Wagner, I think they're going to be a borderline top 10 team. And if they add somebody else of significance, which, I mean, there's some out there. But if they add another one, then it'll really get fun, and then you'll really have to start paying some respect to this team and for what Cal Perry's trying to do. We'll talk about this road show that the Razor Racks are on here in just a second. But, folks, I got to tell you about the Game Time app. I know a lot of you, a lot of you are always looking to go to games, go to concerts. It's concert season. You know, the weather's getting warmer and you want to go to good concerts. And sometimes it's tough to find tickets, especially tickets for the right price and using an app that makes it easy for you. Well, luckily, you have the Game Time app because they do everything that you want to them to do when it comes to making it easy to buy tickets. And one of the best things that they have going is last minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, all of the above. They, if you go on there and you just wait until the very last minute, it's a high risk, but it could be a high reward for you. Or if you just make the decision at the end to go, they got it for you too. They have flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing. So you don't have to worry about other fees getting added in. When you look at it, you can just toggle the setting and it will automatically give you the entire fee up front. You can also get seat views, you get the lowest price guarantee, and you also have your ticket coverage with game time, which your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets or any tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so final segment here on uh, the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, as I know that. Um, the Razorback Road Show was in Little Rock last night. And for those of you who don't know what the Razorback Road Show is, it's essentially where each and every year Razorback coaches, athletic director Hunter Yurichek, uh, personalities go in around to other cities across the state. And Little Rock was held last night. It was at the hall. And you had John Calperi there. You had Hunter Yurichek there. And they're going to be making some other stops. I think they're going to El Dorado, where Cal Perry's going to be. They've been in Jonesboro or and whatever. And, you know, I was thinking about how cool of a thing that is and how unique it is to where you can't always do something like that in all the other states. Like, you go from corner to corner, and sometimes you get fans from other schools in other states. But in Arkansas, I mean, yeah, they may not be a bunch of people that always root for the Arkansas Razorbacks, but you certainly feel like you got the majority of them. So I think it's always just been a really cool thing for them to do. And I'm glad they do it, and I hope they continue to do it. But I also think it's trying to have some good favor in the eyes of 
those for the future. Like, you know, there's still some people that are going to be upset when War Memorial is no longer a place that has Razorback football games, which is going to happen. I'm just getting you all prepared. It is 100% going to happen. After that game against Arkansas State in 2025, no more Razorback football games in Little Rock. And I think that this is kind of getting ahead of it and trying to show that, hey, it's not just, you know, we're trying to, we're not moving games out to despite Central Arkansas or any other part. We still care about everybody. We still care about all the schools and all the cities across the state. And we're doing what we can to make that happen. So I think it's a cool thing that they do it and hopefully they continue to do it. And uh, I, I was able to go to one when it was in Fort Smith back when I lived there. And I was able to go to the one in Little Rock when I was living in Little Rock. And to see the amount of people that show up and the amount of fans that show up and how they were just all in on that, it's 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 needed. It's needed and it's necessary. So if you haven't ever been to one of those and it's coming to your town, coming to your city, go check it out. Go see it. It's really cool. And they put a lot of work into it. They put a lot of effort into it. And I think it's always just good to hear from the coaches in a very casual, fan-driven perspective. And as Cal Perry said last night, um, down there in Little Rock, he says that uh, he's been staying at a lot at a condo in Dixon, which I know where he's been staying. And he's like, and they put me next to Tin Roof. Have you ever had to sleep with earplugs? Because that's how it is. I'm like, sorry for partying. Need to come down there and hang out instead, instead of complaining about it. But still, really good thing though for the Razorbacks. Appreciate all of you listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.